So electric fields, like electric forces, obey the law of superposition. So to work out the electric field due to a series of charges, we need to sum together the electric fields from each of the charges individually. So to see how to do this, let's consider the electric field of a dipole. So a dipole consists of two equal and opposite charges, plus Q and minus Q, which are separated by a distance D. So let's work out the electric field due to the dipole along the axis joining the two charges and then also along the line through the middle of the dipole but perpendicular to, to this. So let's see how we can do that now. So the question is, a charge of minus Q is placed at minus D on 2, 0 and a charge of plus Q is placed at D on 2, 0. Part A, what is the electric field at 0, 0? B, write an expression for the electric field along the line y equals 0 for x is greater than d on 2. And what is the limit as x goes to infinity? C, derive an expression for the electric field along the line x equals 0 for y is greater than 0. Okay, so to consider part A, we need to work out what the electric field is here. So in order to that, do that, we can use the law of superposition. We can work out the electric field from the positive charge and the electric field from the negative charge. Now, electric field lines go out of the positive charge. So it's going to the left here. And on this side of the positive charge, it's going to the right. And electric field lines go into the negative charge. So for the negative charge, we've got electric field lines going to the left here. And then on this side, they'd be going to the right. Okay, so let's write down an expression for the electric field at the origin here, 0, 0, just due to the positive charge. So let's call that E positive. We know that the electric field due to a point charge is given by KQ over R squared. So the distance between the point and the charge in this case is D on 2. So we can write this as kq on d on 2 squared, which we can write as 4kq on d squared. And we've said that this is to the left. Now for the electric field due to the negative charge, we can write E negative, which is equal to again kq because the magnitude of the charge is still q and then we divide by this distance between these two points is again d on 2 so this is divided by d on 2 squared so this is equal to 4kq on d squared and once again we've said this is to the left so to get the total electric field we need to sum these two because they're in the same direction, we don't, we just add them. So we've got 4kq on d squared plus 4kq on d squared, which is equal to 8kq on d squared, and this is to the left. So that's part A. Now we do part B in a similar way. So let's consider a point out here, and we'll call the distance between our point and the origin x because that's usually how we define what x is. So we can write E plus which is the electric field at this point here due to this positive charge. The distance between these two is equal to x minus the d on 2. So we can write this as kq over x minus d on 2 squared and we know that this is going to the right and then e minus the distance between the negative charge and this point is x plus the d on 2 in this case so this is equal to kq over x plus d on 2 squared and in this case those electric field lines are going to the left so because these electric field lines are going in the opposite directions, they're going to be cancelling each other out. So <laughs> continuing here, we can write, well, E total, 
will be equal to e plus minus e minus to the right. So we can write this as kq over x minus d on 2 squared minus kq over x plus d on 2 squared. And now it's, it's fun to simplify this, so let's simplify this. If we pull kq out as a common factor, and then we'll give it a common denominator, so we'll have x minus d on 2 squared and times x plus d on 2 squared. And we'll need to multiply this side by x plus d on 2 squared. And then we're subtracting off x minus d on 2 squared. And then we want to simplify this if we can. So we've got kq. Let's expand the brackets on the top. We've got x squared plus um, 2 times x d on 2. So that's plus x d plus d squared on 4 minus x squared. And then we've got minus times minus 2xd on 2. So that's plus xd. And then we've got minus d squared on 4. And then on the bottom, we can combine these two and write x squared minus d squared on 4 squared, because that was the difference of two squares. And then you can see this cancels this, this cancels this, and we end up with xd plus xd here, so 2kqxd over x squared minus d squared on 4 squared. So, and, and this is to the right. So this is our expression for the electric field at a point x along the axis. We then asked what's the limit as x goes to infinity. So as x goes to infinity, we've got that this goes to, we've got 2kqxd on the top. And on the bottom, the x becomes much, much larger than the d squared on 4. So we've got x squared squared, so x to the 4. So you can see this x will cancel one of these. And so we'll end up with 2kqd over x cubed, which of course will tend towards zero because x is getting really, really big, but it'll tend towards zero as this x cubed term. So that's part B. And then part C, we've got hopefully enough space here to do our part C. So we're now trying to find an expression for the electric field along this line here. So let's choose this point here, which is a height y above the x-axis here, and work out what the electric field is going to be here. Well, due to this positive charge, it's going away from the positive charge. So it's going up like this. And it is going towards this negative charge, so it's going down like this. So hopefully you can see these will have the same magnitude because in both cases it's the same distance from these charges. Let's draw our little triangle here. We've got a height y and we've got the distance d on 2. And this is the distance here. It's the square root of y squared plus d squared on 4. And we'll call this angle here theta. So now what we'll do is we'll follow the same approach, finding e plus and e minus. But in this case, because we've already, uh, we can see that the vertical components are going to cancel out. All we need to calculate is the horizontal components. So now we're going to want to apply the same method as we used up here. So we'll start by calculating e plus. But in this case, we've got E plus going up like this. And the only part that we want to calculate is this horizontal part here. So let's call this horizontal. And this is equal to, 
we've got the k cube and then the distance is y squared plus d squared on 4 and when we square that we get rid of that square root and then because we just want this horizontal component and this angle up here is theta we've got this times sine theta and we can see that sine theta looking at this triangle up here is equal to opposite over hypotenuse so this is equal to d on 2 over the square root of y squared plus d squared on 4. So this is equal to kq and then we've got the d on 2 and then we've got y squared plus d squared on 4 times the square root of y squared plus d squared on 4 so that's y squared plus d squared on 4 to the 3 on 2. Now we also need to work out the horizontal component here due to this negative charge and again it's the same distance so we've got kq y squared plus d squared on 4 and this time we want the horizontal component here so again we times it by sine theta and this will be equal to the same thing so we've got kqd over 2y squared plus d squared on 4 to the 3 on 2. Okay, and the vertical components are equal and opposite so cancel each other out. So now we've got E total and we just need to sum these two together. So we've got KQD and then when we sum these because they're the same the two on the bottom will cancel out. So we've got Y squared plus D squared on 4 to the 3 on 2. And we can see that this is 2 the left. So because these were both going to the left, they summed together.